In this video, we will be talking about how to promote your Amazon products through YouTube influencers, how to provide SEO optimized content for YouTube influencers, and uh, how to drive sales through YouTube platform. So uh, my guest today will be Rob Stanley from uh, Getida. He has a lot of experience with YouTube and uh, before I continue, I wanted to inform you that this session is sponsored by three companies, Getida, Zonguru, and Awesome. Getida, it's a guest of this show. Uh, they are audit and reimbursement uh, solution for Amazon sellers. They can help you to get money back from Amazon because Amazon owes a lot of money to Amazon sellers. Check their offer and the link below in the description. Zonguru is an all-in-one suite for Amazon sellers, perfect at any stage of Amazon journey. And again, Zonguru has an offer and the link below. And finally, Awesome is an FBA business aggregator created by ex-Amazonians. And uh, they uh, can acquire your brand if you're ready to sell and have an exit. So again, contact Awesome if you want to sell your brand. And uh, now I would like to invite and by the way before i invite the speaker please like and subscribe to below this video click all the buttons don't click this button and now i would like to introduce you to our guest let's get ready for rob stanley at the click box hello hey, rob. Hey, Hi. how are you doing? Yeah, I'm hey. good. Thank you. I hope you are also well. Tell Hi, us what you do and what's your experience sure. with YouTube and so on. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I appreciate you having me on. Uh, my name is Rob Stanley. I'm Chief Marketing Officer for Gatita. Uh, against, uh, again, we're the global leader in FBA reimbursements and refunds. Um, so a lot of people don't know I have a pretty extensive background in YouTube. Uh, I've been in e-commerce for over 20 years. Uh, had a company that basically uh, thrived off of DIY videos on YouTube. Very first person to ever post a video on how to take apart your iPhone back in July of 2007, which uh, drove an extreme amount of uh, leads to our website because we had it labeled and done correctly. Uh, so I'm actually YouTube certified, have been for quite a few years. And uh, when I exited my company, the iPhone business, uh, I actually exited with selling the YouTube channel, which had 48 million views when I sold it. So I, I do know a few things about promoting products on YouTube, and we're going to definitely go over some of those today with you. Perfect. And uh, uh, what you will be sharing, what kind of strategies or information you will uh, you have put in your presentation? Yeah, so there's about three different ways you can benefit from this if you sell on Amazon. Uh, one of them, we're going to tell you kind of just like on Amazon where the title, having the right, correct SEO and the title, and then in the description, having you know proper formatting, proper words and keywords in there. That actually is very similar when it comes to YouTube. So on YouTube, same thing, SEO in the title and description. I'm going to teach you how to put a link in the description that will drive people to your uh, Amazon listing, so driving external traffic. Then also, if you were to go to an influencer on YouTube and you wanted to get them to promote your product or maybe do a video about it, if you just give it to them, they're going to be pretty much just make a video and slap it up there. It's better if you already give it to them with a proper title, description, maybe a thumbnail slash image uh, for them to do it. And you may even get a little bit cheaper that way. Sounds great. And uh, those who want uh, free money from Amazon, Check the link below in the description as well. And you can Both get those. Also $400 <laughs> free reimbursements from Getida. It's an amazing company. And uh, yeah, talking about Getida, while uh, Rob is preparing uh, his slides, let's look uh, or have a short break and let's see a funny clip from this company. All right, we're ready for your presentation. Thank you. Yeah, so just real quick, be able to be sure to head over to gatita.com forward slash click K L I K to get that $400 in free reimbursements. And again, like Augusta says, I appreciate the thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to his channel because he's definitely helping me out and I appreciate that. These are all things you'll want to do, by the way, when you're <laughs> doing this, <laughs> what we're going to cover actually in this presentation. So uh, what he's doing is we want to follow. So 
let's get started though. So how to optimize your Amazon sales using YouTube. So uh, one of the first things I always recommend, um, again, I'm not associated with these uh, with these people in any way. I don't work for them, but it is an affiliate link if you do want to click on it. Uh, or you can just go to buddy.com. It's an amazing tool. I will reference it a few times. If Augustus isn't using it on his channel, he definitely should be. Uh, it's There's a, a couple others out there like it, but uh, definitely one of the best ones. So let's keep rolling though. So YouTube channel name. So just to kind of give some basics when you're getting that channel going. And, and let's remember the first thing you're doing is, uh, why am I talking about this? I'm going to just cover that for a quick second. So when people go to search for products, they're going to search on Amazon for the products. When people go to search about your brand or your product, they're going to search on Google. Well, obviously Google owns YouTube. So we want you to own the majority of that front page if somebody is searching about your brand or your product. And one of the ways we could do that is with YouTube. So what you can do is once you've get 100 subscribers, if you look on the left here, you can see the, the top kind of funky with all the letters and initials and everything. That's your standard channel. Once you get 100 subscribers, you're able to change it to a unique URL, which you can see at the bottom, youtube.com forward slash C forward slash Katita. And then you can see over on the right and Google, that's what it looks like. So again, this is another way to own a lot of that. So if you went to Google and search Katita, we would come up uh, several different ways, including our YouTube channel. So that's just uh, something to remember as you get started uh, creating your channel. All right, so another thing you wanna do, some of these things are gonna be one-time type items setting up your channel. So for instance, make sure that when you go to do the image, uh, these are images that are gonna reflect your company. Uh, a lot of people are starting to become aware of our G, even though we're not Google, <laughs> we are Gatita. But just so you know, it's like you don't want it to get cut off uh, on the left there. You want to use something that basically fills the screen. And again, I could have just put the word Gatita in there and uh, you know made sure it fit. But I think the G was a better fit in this case. So, and again, you uh, you can always look at Orange Click's channel, and you can see that obviously Augustus done it right, and he has uh, some great information there, or, or he's doing things correctly on his channel. All right, so let's talk about channel headers. So thanks, Augustus, for letting me uh, use this channel header. So this is kind of the main image that everybody sees at the top. Uh, Direct Fix was my former company I was just talking about. I've made that very public to people. So there's a few things you can do in there. First of all, there's a couple templates. I'll get to it in a moment. But this is the sizing restriction. You want to have like a call to action in there or it, you know, kind of tell us what you're talking about or what the channel is going to be like when people land there. So again, on my direct fix one, I had the website uh, kind of told you when we were open, a phone number to call. Augustus has been great at you know helping Amazon sellers succeed. It's a picture of him and a picture of uh, Lizette, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, so it kind of gives you just an idea of who they are. So that's something to think about when you're kind of uh, creating your channel header. Again, that's a one-time thing you do. So here's a link, a bit.ly link to Snappa. Dash Rob would be this free link. So it just kind of gives you an idea that yes, you have to fill up that entire space for the TV, even though probably a small amount of people are watching uh, YouTube on their TV, but they will or go to your channel. And then it works down from desktop tablet. Uh, your focus area is mainly that center where it says text and logo safe area. That's the ones we were just showing in the previous slide. I'm just going to go back to it for a quick second. These are the ones that we basically are re referencing in the center. So Again, that free template is bit.ly snappa-rob. So, okay, so channel trailers. Let's talk about that a little bit. So if you're not familiar with the channel trailer, it's usually a video that's done that when people first get to the website, it's gonna tell them a little bit about what you're covering in your uh, channel. So, you know, if I was doing a comedy one, I would say there's something about there. But the new thing that's changed in the last couple of years, a lot of people would make those videos. And one of the things that's coming up now is not really needing a channel trailer. So instead of creating a channel trailer, what they're advising now is to go ahead and use like your best video. If you have a video that's getting a lot of views, I would make that. And I would, I'd make that your channel trailer. And I'd also rotate that maybe uh, maybe twice a week or once a month, just to have your most popular one that's really popular. Now you can do it two ways. There's one that people not subscribed to your channel can see one. Maybe in that case, the channel trailer could be what your channel's about for people that haven't subscribed yet. Make sure you ask them to subscribe. Speaking of that, make sure to hit uh, down in the corner for uh, ClickBox and uh, for Augustus. And then another way is to, uh, after they have subscribed, they when they come back, why wouldn't you show them your most popular video? Because maybe they haven't seen it yet. So something to think about on that when it comes to channel trailers. So let's talk about headers and website links. So 
Augustus and I have been both asking you to push that subscribe button. This is what he's referring to. So down in the Gatita corner, it says Gatita click here. I'm sorry, I messed up on that. Um, this is still the channel header. So I, I haven't got to subscribe yet. So this is the header, the image at the very top we've been talking about. This is to be able to link to your website. You could, if you only have one product, you could link this actually to your Amazon product it, or product page or web store, so to speak, Amazon store. But what I'm getting at here is don't just put something generic like my website. Make sure you put in there what you're linking to. Are you linking to your Amazon store? Then say Amazon store, click here. If you're linking to another, like a website, like you have your own website and maybe it talks about your company, you could put it to the company. And uh, so you're using this to your advantage. So this is one way you could either A, drive external traffic to a store you have or a website you have, or possibly even to Amazon. Something to think about there. So channel description, let's dive in a little bit. Uh, channel description would be something that's gonna describe your channel, obviously. Uh, you wanna add keywords to your channel that describe that, you know, give it the description that you're looking for, but also, you know, describe what it's about. You know, use those keywords in the sense of, uh, you know, if, if it's regarding your product, you probably already looked up all these keywords when you're doing like your PPC and you're looking at, uh, you know, for keywords for your products. You could use those same ones over here on the channel description. Put in a channel description, make sure some of those keywords are in there. Make sure you fill this out. A lot of people skip this step on the, uh, you know, channel description. So don't, don't skip this. Channel keywords, again, this is a great spot. You've probably already done this. Uh, you know what keywords work for your um, products you're selling on Amazon. Again, it's a, you know they're gonna also fit your brand. You know Anything to do with your brand or your product, you're gonna want those keywords in here. I'd keep it around 10 or 15. You really don't need more than that, and I probably wouldn't go less than that. This is just a little screenshot showing you where to do that uh, within the YouTube uh, dashboard, so to speak, or settings area. All right, so channel recommendations. So let's talk about this a little bit. This, and remember, I'm assuming that you kind of know some of this. And if you don't, you can find all these things when you open your channel, okay? You can always go back, watch this video, and take a look at some of these areas. So I obviously put, you know, a customized channel, add, add section, add feature channel. That's how you get to this area. Now you can see that Augustus is actually on the Gatita as a recommendation. So let's talk about what that means. Um, a, I set up a little landing area that shows kind of all our partners on the front of our YouTube channel at the bottom. And uh, you can go after this video is over, you can check out Gatita's uh, YouTube channel. And uh, But part of the reason I do this is when my video finishes, all the recommendations will come up at the end, like, hey, this is a recommended video. And also, thanks to Orange Click being a partner, that our videos will sometimes show up as recommended videos on their channel after you've watched a video over there. So even possibly after this video, you might get a uh, recommendation to go and watch a Gatita video So from our channel. So that's something you definitely wanna do. Uh, don't put competitors in there, put complimentary uh, channels, like obviously Orange Click is a complimentary channel to Gatita and vice versa. So that's something you definitely wanna do to try to draw more people to watch your videos and learn about your product. Playlist title optimization. A lot of people skip playlists. This is a really key area for SEO. And uh, what you could do is you basically, if you give it the correct title and the correct description in there, it can really show up well, depending on what you're trying to keyword it towards. So playlist is just basically uh, several videos. Uh, you can even do it with one, but several videos in a list that people might want to come to and they're, and they're similar. So maybe they want to listen to, uh, this is, for instance, my Sellernomics podcast. I always have all the different podcasts I've done are listed in there. So people could come and see one after the other after the other, or they get a list of all of them. This is a great way for things to show up in a search. If there's a keyword that maybe a lot of people are not focused on, you can make a playlist with that keyword and that playlist will show up possibly besides your video or maybe also including your video. So now you're covering more of the search. So you have two possibilities, either the video that you did regarding that keyword and a playlist regarding that keyword. So there's a little bit of information here on, you know, under a thousand characters. It's kind of giving you some, uh, you know, for the description it needs to be under a thousand characters. Keep the uh, title to three to five, uh, three to five words. Let's talk about channel branding video watermark. So this is, uh, this is where I meant to say where we we're talking about subscribe. So speaking of that, Make sure you click down in the bottom right-hand corner 
ClickBox has a uh, probably a subscribe, if I'm not mistaken. It's on the left. Be sure to click on that. Uh, no offense to Augustus, not the best one because you can see I had to blow that up quite a bit to get it to see where it says subscribe. Um, what I usually prefer to do is use a big thumbs up. So Augustus may want to switch this down the way. I'd be happy to give him that image. Uh, but that is something that uh, it has to be catchy, has to be quick. Maybe uh, for Augustus, we'll make it an orange background with a white thumbs up. And then he could just tell people hit the thumbs up in the corner to subscribe to my channel. Um, just a little something to think about. Just uh, we've, we've seen a, a significant, almost a 30% increase just by changing that logo down in the corner to get people to subscribe to your channel. Now, real quick, why you want people to subscribe to your channel, just like Augustus, anytime he releases a video, there's hundreds of people get notified that there's a new video up from Augustus or he's gone live. And that's something you definitely want. If you're putting a new product up or you just announced a new product or a new video just went up, a bunch of people get notified and they immediately can go and watch it. And it builds up people watching that video, which will build up the SEO. So. Let's talk a little bit about video optimization. So this is something that will be more of an ongoing thing anytime you're creating a video or uploading a video. And just so we're clear, um, probably most of you, if you're selling on Amazon, already have a video because that's one of the things you usually talked about to get a lot of sales is have a video. So you already have videos. So take that video or videos that you've done and put it over on YouTube and create a whole brand around it. So that way you have one more place that your brand's being seen or your products are being seen. Okay, also video optimization. Again, if you go to an influencer on YouTube, these are things that you'll wanna make sure that they do or you've already done for them because you want your video to show up. If they're a big influencer, they're gonna get a lot of, people are gonna get notified that subscribe to them about this video they just put up about your product. So if it's SEO keyworded correctly in the title, description, and tag words, Definitely going to want that uh, done. And if you do the research for them, then at least you'll know certain keywords because a lot of these influencers aren't necessarily going to know the proper keywords uh, or description or title that will work best for SEO uh, when it comes to your particular product. So let's jump into this. So video titles, uh, the title should be relevant to the content. Don't, don't try doing anything like quick, you know, quick shortcuts, spammy type stuff uh, in the titles. Uh, the title length should be about 60 characters, which is about five to seven words. Uh, don't make it too much longer than that. Uh, again, TubeBuddy, we were talking about, will help you with some of this. I think they actually recommend 75 characters. Uh, it'll tell you when you hit that limit. Use SEO keywords in the title. We already kind of covered that. Uh, use the search suggestion to find what people are searching for. So kind of just like you, we would do in uh, Amazon, where you go in, you start typing in words, and you can see keywords that people are looking for. Do that exact same thing in YouTube start typing a keyword and it'll give you suggested. And of course the ones at the top are gonna be the ones searched the most. Use uh, use YouTube search suggestion to find people are searching for, sorry, I already did that one. Uh, don't start a video uh, with an episode number in the title, like put that at the end. Uh, don't start it with at the beginning. Like I see sometimes EPS one, episode one, you know, season two or something like that. Uh, do that at the end. Uh, you want that those keywords at the beginning. So. Some popular titles to start with, uh, and I do this a lot with the Gatita ones, uh, How To is the one I use a lot, but DIY, Tutorial, Case Study, 10 Ways To. So even if you're, um, you know, it's a product and you have just a demo about the product, it could be, you know, how to, uh, how to use a, uh, uh, let's go with a garlic press, how to use a garlic press better, how to clean a garlic press, properly cleaning of a garlic press. All those things could be made into individual videos and you can use the word how to. If you can't come up with a how to, that's fine. Just make sure the keywords are in there. That's the biggest thing. Make sure to use the, uh, I still have to go find the proper name for it, the bar symbol. It's the symbol that kind of is the bar. Uh, so just looking at example, how to get views on YouTube. If feeling stuck, then I put the bar in there. Then the company name, you could have put the bar in there and then the brand name or even the episode number, depending on what you're doing. So just some examples here. So why are videos important? Titles important. If you notice, I was playing off the Amazon important, if any of you have ever <laughs> remember that from back in the day. So here's a couple of quick examples. Um, these are on Google search, an actual search, and you should be able to see these also if you went to Google. So Gatita, I search Gatita on the left. You could see that our two of our three videos that come up are actually videos that we put up. So again, if somebody was searching your product or your brand, you want videos to come up that you created 
So they'll come find out about you and that are, are you know, ones that you created and maybe ones they're interested in. It could be, uh, you know, how to replace a battery in something or a feature of something uh, that you're selling. On the right, thanks, Carlos Alvarez. Love that guy. Uh, you could just see like, uh, back in the day, uh, I mean, this was tw 2020, July or June of 2020. I did a video uh, interview with Carlos Alvarez. It still ranks second for his name. The reason I put Amazon after Carlos Alvarez is because there's several other Carlos Alvarez's. So again, I was looking up keywords that would work in SEO for his name. Carlos Alvarez, Amazon came up uh, very high. So I made sure that that was actually in the video. Uh, yes, I did we used to work at feedback was just FYI. So that is my video uh, that I did. So moving on. Uh, so video descriptions, um, include the video title in the first sentence of your description. The first thing that Google will look at and YouTube when doing searches in YouTube or Google are that very first sentence. So tips on how to write effective descriptions for YouTube and boost views and watch time. My title probably had something to do with how to write an effective description for YouTube. Once again, I reiterated it. I used the word tips at the beginning. Then also make sure to use like a bit.ly link. Uh, these will show up sometimes when people do YouTube searches. In there, they give a little brief description. Those bit.ly links will sometimes show up. I think I have an example coming up. Here's a crucial part. If you notice after the bit.ly, I put a period. It was to tell that that's an end of a sentence. It didn't matter if it was a link. It's an end of a sentence. Then I left a space. So looking at the arrow on the far left, I le on purpose left a space because I just told Google and YouTube the most important part of my description is right here in this first sentence and this link. So I just kind of basically laid it out to them that this is what I want you to show out when somebody searches on YouTube or on Google. Doesn't always work perfectly. Sometimes uh, YouTube or Google will ju jump to the second paragraph or second start of the second paragraph. Hence why in the second paragraph, it's also key to have keywords, hashtags in there. By the way, you're only allowed three hashtags. I would put them right after the second paragraph. Paragraph can be three to four sentences. Um, I know for a fact that uh, Augustus uses hashtags also because I've seen it, but here's a little example of uh, kind of getting your description going correctly. So sorry about that. Uh, moving on. So again, video descriptions, Google search results. So again, on the left, doing a Google search results on Gatita, you can see that uh, some of the descriptions are coming up. Uh, Gatita is premier Amazon auditing and Amazon reimbursement company. So these are showing up on Amazon. And again, for uh, Carlos, thanks again to Carlos, uh, using videos on your Amazon listing. So all three on the right are all videos that Carlos did with me. All three on the left for Gatita are all uh, videos I've either edited or SEO'd for um, Gatita. Again, what you want to do is using those keywords, think about what people are searching on Google and you want to make sure that those videos come up. But you could also do a little research. So if I was, uh, for instance, if I'm selling a, a matcha flavored uh, you know, tea or something like that, I could go to Google, go to YouTube, look for it, and maybe like matcha latte might come up if I'm not mistaken when I looked it up. So I might want to do a video on how to make a matcha latte. And then that way, when people search it on Google or on YouTube, it comes up. So that's uh, kind of you know keywording and making videos that for what people are searching. So here's a good uh, example of a video description uh, that we were just talking about a little while ago. So at the top here was Augustus with uh, Yoni. Uh, you can see that if you put in uh, Augustus's name, it, hopefully this video might come up at some point, or if you put in Prime Talk or about educating Amazon sellers worldwide, uh, down at the bottom, another one regarding Gatita. Uh, and you can see about auditing, Amazon FBA reimbursements. Those are the keywords we're targeting, obviously, for that. And there's a video that came up in the YouTube uh, YouTube search results. So again, this was a YouTube search. So those actually, if I'm not mistaken, were uh, fairly high up on the search. That's why I grabbed them. So, All right, so let's talk a little bit about video descriptions. So you can use time codes, which is something that's uh, fairly new. And actually, YouTube is starting a beta of trying to do this automatically for people. I would say for right now, put your own uh, time codes in. What you're doing is you're telling them that in this section of the video, we're talking about something specific. So, and by the way, you always have to start with zero, zero, colon, zero, zero, and then don't leave a dash, by the way, I should probably fix that. It's just a space and then whatever it is, a period, then go to the next. 
and you're saying at the start of 30 seconds in, we're going to write first effective tip for Amazon descriptions at five minutes and 38 seconds. We're now going to talk about top reasons why short Amazon descriptions fail and et cetera, et cetera. So a little something to make sure that's in the description. That's going to be lower down in your video description. Uh, again, referencing back to that video a little while ago, I'm sorry, the slide a couple ago, uh, you want to start with that uh, keywords in the title. The length of the description area is about 5,000 characters uh, with spaces. Try to use all of them. Um, all the pertinent information regarding the video is at the top, which we kind of just talked about two slides ago. At the bottom is where you're going to want the time code, any social links, uh, any links to anything else like your uh, brand or company. Again, this is different than that very first bit.ly link that's at the top that you want to get recognized. That could be going to your website or your Amazon product. Okay, so just remember that. Also make sure to use full URLs. So HTTPS colon backslash backslash. Again, three hashtags. Uh, don't bother with emojis and icons. I see so many people do it. It actually does not help with your SEO and sometimes it can even be a little distracting. So a couple tips there. All right, so YouTube search results. Here's what we were talking about earlier. Uh, again, this is a video I did with Carlos Alvarez. Uh, and you can see in the actual search on the left, uh, the bit.ly link, I enlarged it over here on the right. Uh, you can see the bit.ly link. It was actually clickable. So they didn't even have to go in and watch my video or the video that I created in order to click and leave and go to either my website or my product on Amazon. So I could have made that bit.ly link anything. In this case, it's actually uh, going to Feedback Quiz. Again, I was formerly CMO over there, uh, just a reminder. But uh, this is how effective this is. Uh, this mimics the title, How to Drive effective traffic to your Amazon listing with Carlos Alvarez. You can see how to drive effective, effective converting traffic to your Amazon listing. We, you know, switched around a little bit, but it's still basically the same one. Feedback was trial and then a bit.ly link. Now these are key because doing this correctly and when it shows up on YouTube search correctly, people could skip even watching your video and go right to your Amazon listing. This is driving external traffic, which everybody is always talking about and wanting to do. And yes, this is legal. Yes, this is terms of service correct because you can do this. So at least at the time of saying this, it is, <laughs> you can do it. All right, so quick um, look at an actual description. Aaron Biner was on my podcast and uh, you can see that the title at the very top, I left, I did the bit.ly link. I had the hash, one of the hashtags at the top because I wanted it to come up first. Then we skipped uh, to the second paragraph, put some information in there about what he was talking about added the couple of hashtags at the end of that second paragraph. I did a uh, YouTube channel subscription uh, with a bit.ly link. Uh, and then of course, there's a little bit of information about Aaron and then it talks more about him. And there's a lot more below this. I didn't wanna like uh, put it all in there because it would make it too long to see, but you get the idea of kind of a format I follow. And this format has worked over and over again, year after year, so. Video thumbnails. Uh, I know that Augustus knows these are important because I've seen um, some great thumbnails that he uses. Uh, thumbnail images should be about 1280 by 720 or 169 aspect. Always use a custom thumbnail. Don't use thumbnails YouTube assigns to the video. They're no good. They're not going to drive people there. Do not use template thumbnails, uh, which you can find on the internet. Always use about three to five large words to try to describe it. You got seconds to get their attention when they're looking at either on YouTube or on Google at those little images on possible videos they're gonna watch. Uh, make sure the person in the or the item, which we'll get in this a little bit later, is clear in the thumbnail. So uh, Augustus is great at doing this. You see his face and he's making crazy images or something you know, fun like pointing up. So uh, those are always great. You know, those are great to have. It gets people's attention. They're like, oh wow, look at him. You know, what is he doing? You can do that same thing, uh, not that same thing, but you can do same with a product. Make sure it's a clear, it's very easy to understand that, hey, that's a garlic press. I know exactly what that is looking at that little tiny thumbnail. So they must be talking about something with garlic presses. So there you go. Make sure they stand out. Try not to use templates for each thumbnail. So always change them around. Uh, make sure the background has a bright color. Uh, make sure you use uh, whatever you're doing in the video is actually out there. So Augustus does this, uh, you know, when he's shooting a video, he'll make sure that whatever uh, facial expression he's using in the video is part of his thumbnail. And then of course you can always do a little bit AAB testing. Uh, this is optional. Um, I recommend pickfoo.com. There is other ones out there that you could use. So here's some examples of thumbnails. 
Uh, I am, uh, Carlos is fixing this and he was nice enough to let me use it. So some video thumbnails, you can see that um, these all look cookie cutter. They are all from a template. Uh, it's very hard to see what they're talking about, if at all. And um, really, if you're the host of, let's say, an item, like a podcast or whatever, you don't need your picture on there. You need the guest picture. So coming up here, uh, I will, again, I know we're talking about products. Give me a second. We'll get there. So these are, don't use cookie cutters, basically. So here's a quick example, and this is Gatita. Um, we do have some semi-custom ones that we use. If you notice, a lot of them, the lettering is very big. Some of them are a little long, but uh, we try to keep it within that five, four to five uh, words. Uh, and then, of course, you could see in there. I mean, you could see very easily, you know, Jamie Davidson, Danny McMillan, Carlos Alvarez. Uh, you could see their faces, Phil, Sarah, all of them. You see it very clearly. Um, Yoni did want his face in there and Gatita's logo and Prime Talk. So you can see this is why I call them semi-custom. We do alter into the backgrounds. Uh, we do change the font, the person in it. Again, everybody knows that Yoni's doing the Prime Talk podcast. So a small picture is fine to have them on there. We also alternate right and left where we put the uh, picture of the person. Again, the products are coming up. So let's, here we go. Let's talk about products. So let's go straight to the right since we kind of already talked about on the left there. So these are, again, uh, I would probably change these a little bit, the ones on the right. I don't have control of that YouTube channel that I used to own. But you could see pretty clearly, bottom right corner, Prius key, battery replacement. If you had a Prius or even a key fob for your car, you know what that picture looks like. The picture just left of it in the uh, middle, iPhone screen protector installation. Again, you could see a hammer hitting the phone. Left of that is a, called a tri-point Y tool, Y000 tool, one of the things I used to sell. Clearly, you can see that tool. You can even see I blew up the uh, kind of the tip of what it looks like. And then up above, a screen replacement and two battery replacements. It's pretty easy to see those. Uh, shifting the left just real quickly, uh, you can see that for my podcast, I every single um, one of my images have different color backgrounds, uh, very big, bold text. And uh, the person you can see very clear on who's going to be on there. So there's a, on the left, an example of a person. On the right, an example of using products and making thumbnails for products. These are crucial. I know I'm kind of going into thumbnails quite a bit. It is very crucial. It can make the difference between somebody clicking on your video and not clicking on your video. All right, we're going to do a little poll. Uh, I searched the word custom thumbnails. Now, all these came up. But which one of these do you think came up at the top and pretty much had the most clicks on it and the most views on it? Which one do you think, Augustus? I think it's B, but it's also a very known uh, YouTube channel. This guy, he has like million subscribers. That's so obviously... because Augustus, Augustus knows. He's been around a while, but he is right. It is B. Um, and you could, but let, let's just look. You could, these all came up when I searched. These are, mm -hmm. some of these are terrible. I mean, these are terrible thumbnails. I can't even, I mean, add or change thumbnail. That's what it said versus custom thumbnail on the bottom left corner for C. Um, in the top left corner, make and upload thumbnails, how to. The wording's good, but it's so hard to read, you know? So it's very mm. easy to see that B, uh, quick and easy custom thumbnails. The guy's giving expression. Again, uh, the point being that when you're doing a product, you want it to be easy to see. Maybe you're holding the product or somebody is holding the product with an expression, depending what your product is and what you're selling. Uh, so again, this was obviously the winner has like 3.4 million views. Uh, it's doing great. So let's, let's keep moving on though. Cause there's lots of, lots more to cover. So video tags and keywords. Let's talk a little bit about this. So tags and keywords should be related to your title. So use tags and keywords for all your videos. Don't leave these out. I see so many times a video that it ranks really high and they don't have any tags or keywords in there. If I went and made that same video and add tags and keywords, I'd probably dominate and be number one for whatever that is that I was searching, okay? You're limited to 500 characters in the tags area, use them all. Now, you'll notice on the left, they have green little numbers next to them. Thanks to TubeBuddy, this telling me how they rank. So this is how they rank on both uh, YouTube and I think Google also, but definitely YouTube. Um, you can resort these. I remove sometimes ones on there that, uh, oh yeah, I'm sorry, they, they rank for YouTube search results. So I can remove certain ones, try more creative ones to get them and uh, try to get as many in there 
that have that green numbers. And unfortunately, we want to have number one, but they can't all be number one. So as many as you can that have a ranking, because that's just more possibilities that anybody searching a combination of any of those green ones, it's going to, our video is going to come up, right? This one, uh, again, was regarding Yoni. So, and I think it was Kara Savra. So just going on, uh, video subtitles, closed captions. So use subtitles if you have the time uh, to do them. It's good for YouTube SEO. Studies have shown that YouTube videos on average can bring in 7% more views uh, and also retention rate. This is kind of crazy. YouTube auto caption. oh, I'm sorry, backing up slightly. YouTube auto captions are only about 70% accurate. You could use that as a baseline. So if you ever seen that CC in the corner and you click on it, words start coming up across the screen as a person's talking. Uh, it's actually a lot of people use it. Um, and I recommend you doing it if you have the time, especially if you're only doing a couple videos. Uh, we're doing quite a few videos, so I don't always have time to go back and do them. Uh, studies also shown that captions are proven to increase comprehension of the video content. So again, if you do them and somebody is watching it with the uh, closed caption on, there's a good chance they'll have a better understanding of what the item is, what product you're selling, maybe what some of the features are in it. Uh, so make sure to do that. Um, then of course, I do have a quick recommendation. If you don't have time to do it, maybe just start with your top five videos. And then also you could check with Fiverr or even a service like rev.com that will actually do the closed caption for you. So, all right, so video in screens. Now I know Augustus is great at this because I've watched plenty of his videos and you could see on the left, he does this ahead of time in the video. He's pointing up and then he goes back a little after and he adds a video in screen in. And now, you know, when he's telling you, hey, be sure to click on this video to hear more about whatever X, Y, Z or check out my next video. Awesome. Augustus does a great job at this. Here's a little different version of it on the right. What we do with Katita, we end up actually putting a little bit of a promotion thing at the top besides our logo. And we give you two options of two different videos and I can rotate those at any time. So, and actually underneath those is, uh, it says like subscribe and something else. So if I ever forget to go put the videos in there, uh, it actually has a, a two bits of information under there uh, just in case. So just something quick there on your end screen, always do an end screen. All right, info cards, uh, AKA cards. So as you're watching a video, hopefully even at the beginning of this video or even right now, uh, in the top right-hand corner, you'll see something that says, uh, either, you know, it depends what actually Augustus uh, puts there. In this particular case, I used Amazon auditing and FBA reimbursements. And what happens is it shows up in the top right. It gives you a chance to basically go to and see other videos that we have. If maybe uh, somebody's not interested in this video, I usually try to do them in the first 40 seconds because there is a, a substantial drop off rate on all videos on YouTube after about 30, 40 seconds. Uh, even if your video does really well, it's still going to see that drop off right around that time. Once you're a YouTube partner, now there are quick uh, requirements for YouTube partnership. If I'm not mistaken, it's like you have to have an ongoing 4,000 views, uh, 4,000 hours of views or watch time on your videos. And I think it's 1,000 subscribers to become a partner. They'll let you know when you're a partner. Once you do, you can actually make that link at the top clickable. And yes, you can click on it and go to a Shopify store, an Amazon store, an Amazon product. So this is one thing that is key. Again, talking about ex external driving external traffic and you're allowed to, there you go. There's a, there's a uh, way to do it. Again, uh, it does take a while to become an Amazon partner, but it's something you want to work towards. Total video length. So there's a lot of debate on video lengths. Uh, I've, heard, I've heard, watched, and read a lot about it. Uh, research shown that the top, most of the top videos on average length are just under 15 minutes. Doesn't necessarily mean that that's it. Like if you're doing a video and it's 10 minutes of great information or it's 40 minutes of great information and people are watching it and they're hooked and they're staying on there, you're okay. If you're going to create a video, don't try to stretch it to that 15 minutes. Work on the content more than the video length and don't put any fillers in there or anything. It just... But just on average, just so you know, it's about 15 minutes is a, a good point to aim for. Again, you could be under that or a little over that. So video intro length, uh, Augustus might need to work on this a bit and just my personal opinion, but uh, you want to have as short as intro as, as possible. It's probably a little different for Augustus because we're doing more like um, educational type information right now in these videos versus if you're doing a video about your product, I would maybe just have a quick splash screen with your logo 
a quick splash of about what you're going to be talking about. Like, Hey, this uh, garlic press on how to clean it or something like that. Uh, you just want to keep it short. Uh, don't start the video with a long intro quickly. Tell someone, uh, another little tip you could do if it's going to be longer and Augustus may do this. I, I, I can't remember off the top of my hand head, but he may do a little thing right at the beginning when the first video starts. Hey, today we're going to be talking with Rob Stanley and we're going to be talking about, uh, how to use, uh, YouTube to, uh, you know, push your products or, you know, for influencers, then he'll cut to his opening, which could be longer, but he gave you a quick upfront to get, grab those first 30 second people on here's what we're going to cover. Here's what we're talking about. Again, you can do that same thing. If there's a key, maybe thing where you're replacing a battery or showing a feature, you could th show that really quickly at the beginning and put a little thing in there that says, Hey, how to uh, clean a garlic press and then do a little intro with your branding and then go on to the actual video. So, oh uh, man, I, I forgot to edit this. So actually Carlos, uh, I, did have an example set up. Unfortunately, I forgot to add it back into my video slides. Uh, there was an intro. Uh, Carlos had a bit of a long intro and uh, I was talking to him about it. So, all right, we'll move on. Uh, best date and time to upload videos. There is no magic date and time, just so you know, because it, it really is going to depend on what kind of content you're putting out and who's watching it. So publishing a video on YouTube at the best time and date can be as many four times more views. This will vary and depend on the content. On average, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 1 p.m. to 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. East Daylight, 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time are good times to try. Saturdays and Sundays between the times written there. Now, I would suggest a lot of times when we do video content, I am doing video content specifically for people in our industry, in the Amazon industry or Amazon sellers. You're most likely going to be watching Monday. Wednesday or Friday, Saturday and Sunday, you're probably working on your business or you're off trying to recoup until Monday. So for products though, you may want to do try them on the weekends on that Saturday and Sunday. A lot of people search on Sunday for products and they may search your brand on Saturday or Sunday because maybe it's something they heard about or they saw a video about it or they're in need of it. So just something to remember. So Afro uploads, be sure to share your video on social media and websites. It's okay. It's a product video. Share it everywhere. I do all the time. If you have a newsletter that goes out, put it in the newsletter. Heck, share the video with people that you know, uh, partners or friends, have them share it too. Always a good thing because you want to drive up those views so that way the SEO ranks higher. Uh, viewer comment replies. Make sure you reply to every comment that is written. This is no different than back in the day with Amazon when you would reply to everybody, tell them, hey, we did version 2.0 or hey, I'm sorry you had a problem or thanks for uh, posting something great about it. Key here is you could put links, clickable links in your comments. So if you notice on our Gatita one, I put uh, glad you enjoyed it. Be sure to sign up for Gatita free at and then a bit.ly link. OK, I could have also not used a bit.ly link. It still would be clickable. Always reply to those comments. Uh, how to contact influencers. Let's go over this real quick. So a lot of times you're going to do search on uh, garlic presses. If there's some maybe chef out there and he's using a garlic press and you'd like them to promote it, uh, what you could do is go to their uh, YouTube channel and then uh, look in there. I think it's in the about section and there should be, if they have an email, you can click on the view email address and then you'll be able to get a hold of their email and email them directly and see if they're interested in promoting your product. So that's one way you can do it. I'm sure there's some services out there, but this is just one way you could do it yourself. So let's talk about offsetting influencers. All right. Uh, we already gave this earlier, but I wanted you to be sure to understand one of the ways you could offset influencer cost and people doing your videos for you and promoting your product is with katita.com forward slash click. So you get $1,200, first $1,200 in free FBA reimbursements. $1,200 is a lot of money you could spend on some of these influencers. So I would definitely take advantage of that. Again, we're always like supporting uh, ClickBox, uh, Orange Click, and Augustus. Always uh, great. I think I have one last one. If anybody, uh, again, I I actually am full time at Gatita as Chief Marketing Officer. I will try and answer your questions if you do email me regarding YouTube. Uh, but please give it a little bit of time. I do travel a lot, and again, my full time is spent on Gatita, and of course, doing things like this uh, to help uh, out you know, Amazon sellers and of course, Augustus and anything he needs. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Rob. And actually going back to the previous slide, but we, I wanted to say that uh, 
that offer is only for those who uh, go to the Clickbox page and purchase right. the Clickbox. Yes. And uh, your email will be verified if you purchased or not. So 1200 is a special deal if you get the Clickbox. And Clickbox click, click contains not only Getida's offer, but also 22 uh, more offers from different speakers, uh, experts, and software providers. And uh, Clickbox is about $200 but you get Getidas. Uh, basically, you're saving $300 on their fees and a lot of other offers. And if you don't yeah, so, want to purchase... So please please yeah. don't go there without ordering the box because yeah. I don't want to have to tell you that we can't do it. So <laughs> yeah. please definitely go order order the click box first, then go to getida.com forward slash click to get that, that deal. And like uh, Augusta said, we will be verifying that you've ordered the click box first. And then, of course, uh, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe if you like the content I gave. And, uh, I, man, it's been great. Uh, if there's any questions or anything, Augustus, I'm happy to try to respond to as many as possible. Yeah, I would like to go a little bit deeper into um, Amazon seller's shoes. And uh, let's, say, let's take this kind of question. What kind of video content sellers could post on their company's YouTube channel? So now they know, with your help, how to create a YouTube channel. Yep. And like some content which would drive, you know, which would get people heading over to their product detail pages and purchase the products. So you have experience of running a YouTube channel with showcasing uh, products, right? Yeah. So I, I've sold on Amazon. I've sold on my own website. Um, I would definitely, again, most, as we know, uh, Augustus, most people are probably going to already have a video that's in their uh, Amazon listing. Uh, I would start with that. Uh, go, first, go over to YouTube create a YouTube channel, go over all the stuff we talked about for the channel. And then for your first video, I would just put up that video that you already have over on Amazon and then take it from there. Uh, you know, like I was saying, uh, I was talking about the matcha tea. Okay. And I would start doing some research on what are people searching on Google regarding matcha tea? One of them was matcha latte. And then I might do take my product and shoot a video literally with my phone in high quality, at least, at least, you know, 1080 in my kitchen with some good lighting. And I would just shoot something really simple on step-by-step -step how to make matcha tea, matcha latte, I'm sorry. And then I would post that video up and I would keyword in there, matcha latte. So what you're doing is you're basically trying to make a video for every keyword that you feel is relevant to your product. Because again, people search on Google for products and brands when they search for an actual, I'm sorry, when they search for brands and your company name, they're going to go to Google. When they're searching for a product, they go to Amazon. So you want to obviously already, hopefully you already own a lot of the keywords over on Amazon. Now, when they're coming to find out more about your brand, or sometimes it could even drive people from searching uh, matcha latte, they watch your video. And then they, if you have it done correctly and say it's available on Amazon, they could click in the description below and go buy your product. So it's almost two ways. You could have two ways going there. And that's the way we used a lot when I was selling the iPhone parts back in the day. Of course, I'm. Uh, we're working uh, daily with, uh, you know, YouTube, and you mentioned like matcha tea, and I remember that very good ideas you can get. What kind of uh, videos you could do if you go just in this auto suggest on YouTube? So matcha tea yep. re recipe, matcha tea benefits. Just create this, you know. There it is, matcha iced products, latte. Yeah. I was just talking yeah. about matcha ice ice latte. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it, and and I mean, if you take out the word tea and just hit space, uh, it it'll drop down all the suggestions. Also, there you go. Uh, matcha matcha. I mean, matcha and the bear. Yeah. I mean, matcha sa. I'm sure so. I'm sure, not all these are matcha tea. But yeah, if you yeah. notice further down, matcha recipe. So yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, right there. So there you go. I'd almost now I would make a uh, video of using my matcha tea and some sort of recipes. And then I would make sure that it's in that title, the word matcha recipe somewhere, how to make a, how to make the best matcha recipe for X, Y, Z, you know, and then your yeah. brand name after that. So, yeah, it's a lot of uh, ways to get ideas. Absolutely. And um, let's say if someone uploads a video with their product, um, show showcasing their product, do you think in the description, they should put a link to their product detail page or to the storefront of their Amazon store? Yeah, so if you're, I would usually su suggest if if you don't have any complementary other products to go along with it, let's say you're only a one or you only have one to three products, I would link in the description directly to the page. 
Now I'm not going to go over the linking and what's probably best because that's not my area. I'm sure there's certain ways you could put stuff in that bit.ly link that would help you when you go over there. I'm not going to make those suggestions. Again, I'm not a pro at that, mm -hmm. but in general, I would definitely be linking directly to my product. If you're a bigger brand and let's say um, you're selling uh, tea mugs and one of the things you're also selling is the matcha latte tea, then what I might do is have it link actually to my storefront over on Amazon because then they could see a whole variety of, of things I sell because maybe they bought the tea but didn't buy my mug or vice versa. Perfect. And uh, one more question. Uh, do you know if it's possible to track the sales which came from YouTube links? That's a good question. I, if I'm not mistaken, I don't think you can. But if you're using the Bitly, you could still go look at how many clicked on it. It's not going to necessarily tell you the sales, uh, but it will at least tell you, hey, this video and this in this link in this description, this Bitly link in this description is getting clicked a lot of times. That's great. Maybe I'll go look and see where is it. And you'll probably see maybe your sales are increasing on that particular product or you know, your store is starting to see more traffic to it. Uh, there is no analytics uh, for that because as we all know, Amazon doesn't allow a lot of stuff, but I would say at least you could track how many times that Bitly link has been clicked. All right, uh, perfect. Thank you very much, Rob. And again, if uh, you want to get uh, $400 reimbursements, go to getida.com slash click. And if you want to get $1,200 in FBA reimbursements, uh, you have to purchase the click box, which is worth Absolutely. the, and then you will save on all the fees from Getida and more uh, from more deals you will get in the box. And um, yeah, thanks a lot. If people have questions or want to follow up, what's the best way to reach out to you? Yeah, so I'm I'm obviously available all over social media as either Rob R O B R O B B Y Stanley. Uh, the easiest way, if you want to just get a hold of me, it's Rob R O B at getida, G-E-T-I-D-A dot com. That's the simple, fast way. And again, I'll do my best to try to answer any questions come in or give you any information you need. Perfect. Thank you very much and good luck in your business. Bye. Thanks. And now I would like to invite you to watch other video where we talk about external traffic. And this one will be about driving traffic from Google advertising. Uh, there we had a guest from OMG agency and i hope this video will help you to give more get more ideas how to get more traffic to your amazon products